Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris, and I'd like to welcome you to a, a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, in this conversation, we'll be discussing uh, ec- ecstatic bliss and bliss and some of the many positive uh, uh, feelings and, and phenomena of the Kundalini. Uh, but in the beginning, I would, as, as we always do, I would like to, to thank uh, uh, Amelia Santara and her family in the, the Kingdom of Kerry, Ireland, for sponsoring this show. Uh, you know, she she pays money out of her account uh, every month for, for this show to exist. And I just wanna I just wanna thank her uh for allowing this information to come out because God knows I couldn't afford it at this point. Uh so thank you, uh Santara. Well, you're very welcome indeed, Chris, and as is everybody, it's my privilege and my honor as well. Well, well once again, we, we all thank you for this. And I'd also like to thank Eileen Laurel for the many uh, positive benefits that she has has uh, contributed to this program over the years, the many years that she's been a part of this. So thank you, Eileen. Thank you, Glenn Ola, for the design and, and maintenance of the Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com website. Uh, thank you, Ed. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone who has donated their time or their resources into the continuing uh, mission of the of Kundalini Awakening Systems in order to bring information and understanding to the Kundalini Awakening process, uh, you know, without, without religion or, or some kind of... Uh, uh, you know, a controlling uh, belief system, uh, just a straight information that that happens to people from every belief system and every religion. So, so I'd like to to thank everyone who has contributed to that over the years. Um, and Chris, may may I interrupt you and also thank you for what you have done and what you continue to do, and just take this opportunity to tell everybody, which, you know, I'm sure they know already that you work, Prism works 24-7 supporting people and teaching people about Kundalini. And, you know, he does not charge for his teachings. He doesn't charge for any of his support or for the Shakti Pats. And Prism gives to every single person equally and freely in surrender, love, and it's a living devotion to the divine Kundalini. And, I'd like to invite you, if you want, to support Chrism in his work. And I have a website number that I can give you, or at least an address. It's actually Chrism's blog, and there is a donate button there. Um, and when you donate to Chrism, um, you're supporting him in his work, and it's also a lovely act of service for the benefit of everybody who receives from Chrism the, the teachings and the support that he gives. So all donations are received with love and gratitude. And here is the address that you can um, contact. It's wwwascension hyphen kundalini dot blogspot dot com it's very long so i'll i'll do that again ascension is spelled a s c e n s i o n and i'm sure nobody is as bad a speller as i am but i'll, I'll just say that again a s c e n s i o n so it's w w w dot ascension hyphen kundalini dot blogspot.com and the donate button is at the top of the page on the right hand side and so thank you for that and um, over and out for me for a while uh, thank you Chris thank, thank, thank you Amelia uh, yeah I'm going I'm to comment briefly about that and, and thank you for that announcement Amelia uh, in a moment here uh, for other uh, areas of resource where the the information that's given in this radio broadcast can be can be uh, heard uh, and read would be Kundalini Awakening Systems the number one dot com uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems one at Yahoo Groups uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems one 
on uh, Facebook, Kundalini Awakening Exclamation Point on Facebook, A Kundalini Ashram uh, on Facebook, Kundalini Healing on Facebook, Kundalini Healing on Yahoo. And we also have a Kundalini Awakening uh, a group on uh, in the community section of Google+. And so you have many, many of the different social media we're trying to utilize to get this information out to you. You can reach me personally at KFIRE4ALL, and that's K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L at yahoo.com. Or you can reach Amelia at kundalinimatters at gmail.com. Uh, so please feel free to to communicate your questions, your issues, your your, your concerns, uh, you know, and your joy and, and, and your experiences to those to those various uh, outlets uh, for communication about your Kundalini awakening process. Um, for many years, uh, I've been doing this, and I get chided a lot by by people who appreciate this information for not charging for it. Um, not only am I chided by the people who, uh, by, by some students, people who have decided to become students, uh, private students, uh, but also by other Kundalini teachers because they they feel that what I'm doing underscores their, you know, $5,000 entrance fee for, for receiving, you know, their Shakti pot or their teaching or their their system of, of uh, bringing Kundalini into a person, um, I I didn't have a lot of money at the beginning of my awakening, and I I searched and searched and searched for a teacher, and this was before the internet. So this is before the internet. This is before cell phones, and so basically my searches brought me into bookstores, and and even at those times, you know, I was hard pressed to even be able to afford a book. So as the Kundalini continued to expand within me and, and teach me in the many ways that it did and does, you know, I, I made kind of a personal commitment to bring this information to people without regard to the monetary aspects. And and I hear from, from people, it's like, well, Kristen, you know, they're not going to respect you. They're not going to respect your information. They're not going to respect what it is you have to give unless you charge for it. If you don't charge for it, as far as they're concerned, it's worthless. It's worthless information to them unless you charge them, you know, some sort of a of a of a price to receive this information. And and I you know, I've resisted that for a long time. I've resisted it to the point where where I would uh empty my bank account and and you know, by by giving seminars and, and such. And, you know, I've reached a point where I've had to accept donations. And so I do accept donations, and I'm grateful for Centara uh, to make that announcement. And, and I know Eileen has also made those announcements. And, and I understand that, you know, uh, there are those of you who have donated, you know, on that on that Ascension Kundalini uh blog spot uh, and, and I appreciate it I really do appreciate it and it does it does enable me to continue to take care of the basic necessities while I while I do work with the Kundalini you know and people in different countries you know this uh, you know I'm, I'm working with people from all over the world and that means all time zones uh, so for instance I was up until 4:30 uh, in the morning last night uh, working and then of course when I got up today I'm immediately starting to work with people uh, so it, I do put quite a lot of time and effort into this and I think it is making the world a better place uh, it is bringing more light to people on this world and, and I encourage all of you to do the same bring more light into this world I don't care if you you know if, how you do it if you donate to me fine if, if you if but, but also, in addition to any kind of a donation you make, in your attitudes and your behaviors and expressions to each other, to other people, strangers especially, you know, bring love and bring that love and light and radiance uh, into your behaviors with other people. 
And this, you know, this leads me right into the topic that we're talking about uh, uh, today, which is uh, the ecstatic and blissful states of the Kundalini. Uh, very often, a, when a uh, very often a person is brought into the Kundalini path without knowing it. Um, uh, many people come from extremely challenging uh, childhoods. Uh, childhoods where they've been raped and molested and abused and beaten and tortured in, in, in many different ways that that the the refinement mechanisms of karma can bring to a person. And it's difficult. It's very difficult. And there are many scars and there are many lesions of of uh, of memory and and harshness and pain, confusion and fear that a person can attach to based upon what has occurred to them in their in their childhood and, and, and the early uh, aspects of their life. And as the Kundalini begins to permeate their being, as they reach a, a certain threshold, and the threshold is different for each person, but as they reach the threshold where the enough karma has been balanced, and enough karma has been taken care of, uh, the kundalini begins to seep into those expressions and experiences, and yet not to the point of obliterating uh, the, the person's uh, responsible actions of choice and, and behaviorism, but it seeps in enough so that the person begins to feel a pull, a pull by the kundalini, a pull uh, towards uh, the gifts of grace. And and some of these gifts of grace are what we're going to talk about uh, today in this program. The gifts of grace at the, at the very, very early onset of kundalini can be just a desire to be of service for other people, uh, a, a desire to be of service in the many ways that a person can by by uh, helping, helping little kids, helping uh, uh, elderly people, helping people in need, people who cannot help themselves, uh, helping little animals, helping the environment, helping, helping to the, you know the flowers to grow and the and the insects to thrive. I mean, helping mother, quote unquote, uh, nature, which we all know as to be the feminine aspect of the Kundalini, and so as 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 we in this early area of the process, the Kundalini awakening process, become drawn into the expression of of giving aid and assistance to other people, so do we open up levels of our heart that can allow us to put aside the terrible, terrible, terrible uh, experiences and karmas of the early of the early childhood and the you know the raising of the person now this is not about everyone not everyone had a terrible terrible childhood and then the kundalini comes uh much of this is dependent upon the karma actually all of it is dependent on the karma when we're talking about early childhood experiences okay uh when i was a child as far back as i can remember and and i can remember amazingly far back uh, and I'm I'm not going to go into that, but I can remember very very far back. Uh, as the veil of forgetfulness is placed over a person as they come into life on this world and, and in the body that they're in, aspects of karma will remain with them. Uh, uh, with the kundalini, though, kundalini karma often comes in the in the in the expression of kundalini skill sets and gifts and, and uh, so telepathy clairvoyance clairaudience uh, you know psychokinetics uh, all of these things are, be, are are very clear and very uh expressive within that child and uh depending upon the you know the guidance and the and the way that the divine within that child wants to sculpt that child's existence this will determine how those gifts and skill sets are expressed 
in the early childhood reference references and, and, and options. And so so as the karma, whether it's good or whether it's challenging, flows into that person's life and, and the and the person begins to make choices based upon that karma. Uh this will begin the process of that pull I was mentioning earlier. The pull of the Kundalini to begin to refine more and more and more into its uh, preeminent emergence within the individual. And as the build or the pull of this emergence within the individual begins to pick up uh, a, a stronger a stronger frequency of expression within the person, so do the levels of joy and love and bliss and ecstasy begin to very, very, very slowly express themselves into the individual. But the person has to go through a level of refinement first in order for that to occur. A person has to to feel the pull of the kundalini come into them. Uh, and and, and this, this can, you know, in the early stages of kundalini uh, uh, demonstration upon the, the, the person, uh, this can happen through uh, worship in church. This can happen through uh, extreme experiences of love, love for a child, love for a pet, love for, a, you know, a relationship of love that the person is experiencing in their life. And because love feeds the kundalini. You know, if we look beyond attachment and we look beyond all the different parameters of behavior that come after the kundalini has awakened, before the kundalini has awakened, attachments, of course, are allowed. Attachments, of course, are even even fostered and even... Uh, given into the individual so that they can begin a process of refinement towards the awakened state, and then once the awakened state is attained, those process, those those attachments are encouraged to fall away. Okay, so once again, we have the sine wave. We have the sine wave of attachment, 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 peak of attachment, and then falling off of attachment into a valley of non-attachment. Okay, and then. You know, as as the kundalini pull uh, continues within a person, certain levels of information that are gifted to the to the individual, and, and, and by information I mean perceptions, uh, how a person interacts with their social world, with their environmental world, with the uh, with the inner world of their of their thoughts and dreams and, and intuitive experiences and understandings. You know, as a person continues along those lines, those those expressions uh, will be sculpted by the kundalini within them, and they will not know. The person typically does not get to know uh, at the earlier stages that kundalini is calling the, the shots for them. It's, it's is, is designing the education specifically for that person and that person's karma. They can't know. They're not ready to know, and so they don't. They're not told. That, you know, they, they feel themselves attracted to spiritual type things, to, to expressions of love and healing and grace and and uh, protection and defense and 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 all of these levels of. Of challenging fear in our lives, or or challenging uh, uh, corruption in our lives, and and uh, you know challenging the unfairness or the the uh, the cruelty that we can uh, ex- experience so much in in this reality, in this in this timeline, and in on this world. So, in the early section, we don't get to know that it's kundalini, but we still feel this drawing towards an expression of of love, whether it's courage, defense, uh, uh, you know, striving to, to, to bring justice into the world, striving to bring healing into the world, striving to make that difference in a positive love-based expression. And the, and the expression of love is huge. It's a, it's a huge, multifaceted 
gem the size of a planet. I mean, it's huge, huge. And, and the the facets of, of radiance that come off of that gem that we call love is is almost infinite in its expressions and combinations of expressions that we can bring uh, and, and that we have access to uh, on, on in our bodies on this world. And so as the as the pull of the Kundalini brings a person's interest and and uh, behaviors towards bringing justice and goodness and love and courage and bravery and, and honesty and truth into this world, so does the pull of the Kundalini become stronger. And as it becomes stronger, the drive in the person becomes stronger, and the the frequency and the drive of the of the of the need it becomes this need to to move into these areas of of grace these areas of exalted uh service and change upon the world and as a person begins to move into these areas a certain threshold as i mentioned before a threshold is crossed and then the kundalini makes its its appearance known through an activation sequence the activation can be can be given through uh, a teacher. If they come in contact with the words of a teacher, whether it's on the written page or if it's if it's through a, a radio show like this, or if it's through a, a, a video or a film, or meeting them in person, or uh, just standing next to them in a, in, in line at the grocery store, uh, an activation sequence can be initiated on a person and. Then they begin to feel very, very strong levels of, of love. But it's not the typical feeling of love that you have. This is a tactile, on the skin, on the body, in the body, in the skin, feeling of love. And basically... The human body is covered with millions of snakes, typically. Typically, every human body is covered with millions of snakes. And these snakes we call hair. And the hair and the hair follicles and these little serpents. When the kundalini bliss begins to to rise in a person, it'll rise in different areas for each person, but... You know, there are some typical spots where at the base of the spine and bottoms of the feet, the legs, and, the, you know, the torso. Depending upon the, the customized experience the Kundalini is giving to you will determine, you know, where where the hair follicles really start to become excited. And as these hair follicles become excited, uh, they begin to move. Each Each one moves in its own way. And this is this is the feeling of electric ants or 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 little snakes moving on the body. Well, it's literally the hair follicles, and the hair follicles are just like the human spinal cord, uh, and the, and inside of the spinal cord, there's a channel called the Chitrini channel. That C H I T R I N I Chitrini channel. And as the energy of the kundalini begins to move up this chitrini channel, which is about the width of the hair, uh, but a long hair, definitely a long hair, because it follows the length of the spine. As the, as the energy moves up the chitrini channel, this is what gives rise to the, to the many different undulations and movements that the individual goes through with regards to kriyas, with regards to emotions, with regards to the feeling of tactile levels of pleasure and love. Uh, as so, so as the hair follicles on the body begin to, to vibrate and move uh, automatically due to the activation sequence reached in a kundalini awakening person or activated person, uh, levels of goosebumps, uh, what we we call them in the English language, goosebumps and and vibrations and waves of pleasure begin to oscillate through the human system, and and literally at times it can feel like a wave 
a wave of energy just actuates along the, the hair follicle sections of the body. But it's not just one little hair that's doing it. It's like many, many of the hairs are doing it. And as it really gets gets active and, and strong in its expression, all the hairs will do this. And it'll feel like all the hairs are standing on end, but not in a way that, that it does when you're afraid or you're walking into a haunted house or something like that. It's not like that at all. It's pleasurable. It, it feels really, really, really good. And if you know what is occurring, if the person doesn't know what's occurring, uh, fear is allowed to seep into the experience. And the fear can sap some of the pleasure away from the person. You're going to hear a phone here. I'm not going to answer it, but I, and I apologize for that. Um, but uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and, and give out a number, and that number to call in and ask a question is 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. So as the, as the activation frequency begins to modulate and to vibrate the hair follicles and and we're not talking just the external hair follicle or the hair itself we're talking everything that is associated with with the hair uh, the sweat gland is associated with the hair the hair has a root system that that delves deeply into the into the layers of skin all of this begins to move all of this begins to be changed and transformed by the activation sequence that a person is experiencing. And you know, it's, it's, it's quite amazing. It's quite amazing in its feeling, and, and I definitely encourage everybody to have it. Now, when the fear gets into it, well, of, of course, the fear is going to take away uh, some of the pleasure, if not all of the pleasure, depending on the level of fear a person is experiencing. And uh, I want you to know that those feelings that you're having, for those of you who are just starting to have it, uh, you need to understand that this is okay. Nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong. And I'm going to suggest that you just enjoy it. Let it caress you. This is like the breath of the goddess blowing her energy upon your body. And it, it, it can be a very, very beautiful, tactile experience. Um, so really, really, uh, for those of you that are listening in, t in the archives, uh, hello, hello to you in, in the future time. Uh, really enjoy this. Allow this to occur. Don't be afraid. Nothing is wrong. Uh, this is just the beginning of grace upon the body. And so as as you begin to feel these tactile movements, and if you, you know if you're not injecting a lot of fear into, you can inject wonderment into it. You can inject wonderment, and you can you can kind of wow, be be shocked and surprised and amazed, as I was when it first started happening to me. Uh, but you don't need to be afraid. Uh, these are very tingly type feelings. Uh, these are tingles that travel. And so, you know, you'll have tingles that will go from from a, a channel on your back that will go right all the way up through one of the arms and into the fingers. But you'll have these tingles and these vibrations that move up your spine and cause, cause your back to arch really quickly. And then they'll stop. And then they'll begin again and then come back and your back will arch kind of in a spasm. It'll be like a spasm, but it feels really, really good. These these are the preemptions of bliss. These are the Kundalini's way of beginning to focus and transform the body into a level of of experience where bliss can be attained. And so as the body goes through this transformation, this 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 isn't typically overnight. This will happen day in, day out, night in, night out. Uh, it will happen a lot of the times when you sleep on your right side. If you sleep on your right side with your palms of your hands touching each other as if in a prayer position or if you're in the Gyan Mudra with both hands, 
that's one way to encourage these types of, uh, of experiences to occur. And I do in- encourage you to encourage that. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful way of experiencing the beginning transformative qualities of the of the activating kundalini. And I'm there's a difference between activation and awakening, which I'm going to get to in a moment. So as these sparkles and tingles and and uh, goosebumps of pleasure circulate around the body or 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 are uh, expressed in one area of the body or multiple areas. Uh, allow this to occur. This this should feel really good if you can take the fear element out of it. Feels really good. It 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 begins to to work on the nerve, the nervous system of the body, causing jerks and spasms. And once again, that is quite all right. Nothing is wrong. Everything is good. This is normal. Your body is wired to have kundalini. It's a natural energetic development within the human being. Just always understand that. It is natural to your body. It is natural to your expressions as a human being. It's just not that common. Uh, so as this continues to to flood uh, your your skin and your hair and the hair follicles and the roots and the sweat gland and all of that, uh, you can understand that each it's not just hitting the hairs now. It's 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 going through every cell of the body. Every cell of the body, from the bone marrow outwards towards the the tendons and the and the the flesh and the blood and the lymph and and all the different components that make up a human body, the kundalini is beginning to infuse. Uh, and you'll feel these tingles sometimes inside out. And they feel, once again, it feels really, really good. Sometimes it can feel like a shock to the system. There are certain areas of uh, of activation and awakening that will come across as an electric shock. Uh, I have had these, and, and, you know, they're quite surprising, actually. Uh, but in this case, in the, in the activation to the pre-activation state, uh, you're feeling these swirls and, and sparkles and, and tingles and vibrations of goosebump-type energy moving up your limbs and up your spine and up your chest and around your neck and on top of your head. and You know, at the base of the spine, the palms of the feet, the palms of the hand, the tingles in the fingertips and toe tips, uh, everywhere in between. All, none of the body gets left out in this. You know, this this is a very, very, very strong and beautiful level of experience within the Kundalini. And, you know, I'm going to really encourage you to have this, but don't inject fear into it. You don't need to. You're hearing this information now so that you can take the fear out of it and replace that with with gratitude, wonderment, and the fantastic knowing that you indeed are being visited by a divine energy that is transforming you, transforming you into an expression of grace on this world. So this is very, very, very important, and a lot of people will gain just by standing next to you in the grocery store line or the gas store or, or you know, the, the theater. I mean, anywhere that you are, your radiance precedes you and stays there after you leave. Uh, so, and, and we'll get into this later. Uh, so... So in the pre-activation to the activation stage, the kundalini is warming up the body, beginning to change certain key uh, organ organ systems and and, uh, and sub organelles type systems within the body uh, that that it feels like you know such as the endocrine system and then minor aspects of the endocrine system begin to change and then the skin and the hair hair follicle root of the hair uh the the the, the layers of skin and then the blood and then the bone and the marrow and, you know all the different areas of the body the brain uh and it begins to you you might notice that uh for some of you uh, if you're doing a lot of meditation or if you're following a certain belief system or martial art, uh, that it will f- 
you'll be able to, to feel it going up uh, meridian lines and chi, chi energetic lines that, that you, and, and many of you will think you're having, uh, you know, this, this great chi experience when in fact it's a, it's a kundalini experience, but you don't have reference for that. And so, you know, you call it whatever it is you have reference for. Uh, with, uh, with that in mind, as, as this begins to come up in you and the frequency of the vibrations reach a level, uh, you will have the first spasms of bliss. Bliss will come to you through, often through, uh, you know, there are many vectors of that, that, will, that will stimulate a blissful experience. Uh, uh, many of the vectors are, are, are love-based. If you see, a, you know, somebody helping uh, uh, in a love-based way, uh, something that you can relate to, you know, being rescued from a, a river or, you know, a heroic action of love. And you see that. And your kundalini will begin to resonate with that. And it begins to resonate so strongly in you that a level of extreme love is attained. And we're not talking the kind of romantic love or relationship love that that occurs when we fall in love with another person. We're not talking about that at all. It is a love that is beyond that. It is beyond that type of love. And excuse the phone ringing. It is beyond that kind of love, and it is beyond that expression of familial or friendship or relationship love. In a way, it's a combination a combination of those levels of love. And it's, it's, it's all those levels of love wrapped into a tiny capsule that is then a part of a larger tapestry of love that you're beginning to experience. And this will often overwhelm the body in a way, and the body may begin to cry. And you're not crying from sadness, but because... Because we're so conditioned in our society to to understand that when we cry, oh, we must be sad. Uh, a person can feel sad because that's the reference point they have for this level of energetic uh, expression. They feel this love and they feel their tears pouring out. Uh, and, and they, oh, gosh, I must be sad about something, but I'm not sure what. I, maybe it's because I'm depressed. Maybe it's because uh, Aunt Jean yelled at the dog and I saw her yell at the dog. Maybe it's because this, and this or that. Um, the scenario is, is that in the early stages of bliss, a person must channel this very, very strong, plasma of love uh, through the body, through the tear ducts, through the breathing apparatus. You'll, you'll notice that uh, when a person is in bliss, sometimes they will heave. They will heave. The, the chest will, 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 will tense and the, and the body will heave in expressions of, of sobs like they're crying. Uh, or they will actually cry with sobs and sobs and sobs and tears flowing, flowing, flowing. Not because they're sad, not because they're hurt, but because the bliss is running strongly through them. And as this bliss runs strongly through them, until the body is transformed enough through the kundalini activation, uh, that is how the body can channel such huge energies of emotion huge energies of love, huge energies of appreciation and gratitude and forgiveness and, you know, all the many facets of that love gem that I was describing earlier. The body must use the tears as a, as a relief valve and, and use the heavings and the breathings, you know, the short choppy breaths and the, and the, and the, the tensing of the, of the entire, uh, 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 rib cage and, and, and the, the, the pulsation of the diaphragm that happens during a person's heaving moments uh, as they're crying. Very similar to what happens, by the way, when we laugh. And, and when we laugh that way, too, some of the bliss will also 
uh, as, as a person begins to understand what is happening to be and really enjoying it, they'll begin to laugh uncontrollably. Laugh, 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 laugh. Not because anything is funny, but because that is also another uh, relief, emotional release valve that a person needs to have in order to channel and, and to hold, to have and to hold this level of energy coursing through the, the body systems. And you may you may think, well, why isn't it just there all the time? Why does it come and go? Why does it come and go? Well, it comes and goes because you can only handle it being in the system for a short amount of time so that your system doesn't burn out. And the Kundalini knows this. The Kundalini knows this is that you'll have a wave, you'll have a peak and you'll have a valley of experience with this. You'll have a peak, peak, peak where you're having bliss, 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 bliss and then it'll go away and you'll have like a valley of no bliss. Oh, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, you know, often people think something's wrong. Oh, what did I do to make the Kundalini angry? You know, I'm not feeling the bliss today like I've been feeling for the past few weeks. And all of a sudden it's gone. Well, it's for you to process what you've already been given. It's not because anything has been taken away. It's just because you need time to process what has already been given. This is very important. We must give the body the emotional body, the psychological body, the mental body, the, the physical body, and the spiritual body, time to process the levels of grace that have been given. And, and many of these levels of grace will be given through the, the expression of bliss. Bliss. This, this, this convergence of tactile love upon all five bodies of expression. And bodies of expressions you can you can do somewhat of a of a translation into the purushas of uh, in you know in the Sanskrit or the uh, the uh, the the leaves of expression. So if you if you take an ear of corn and you you pull off a, a leaf of the corn, well that's one body of expression and so on and so forth. So these these bodies of expression, all of them are are um, taken over by levels of bliss. This is in the activated state. And so then you have the spinal sweeper. Then you reach a level of activation that pushes you over the edge into the next stage of the Kundalini experience, and that is the awakening stage. Now, this is the stage that will never stop. This is the stage that will never go away this is a stage, to some degree, during the awakening aspects, you know, unless you have a very strong karma pull for it, you have no choice. Uh, in the awakening stage, it, that light never goes off, no matter what. It never goes off. And you are constantly fed, you are constantly sculpted towards a higher and higher and higher and higher level of enlightenment. And I mean in light, in mint, M-E-A-N-T. So in this enlightenment... Uh, it is, is forever uh, established within you, and from there you begin to walk and talk and act and breathe and relate and live a Kundalini awakened life. And this brings on an even higher levels of, of blissful experience. And these are the ecstatic states of bliss. Ecstasy... Uh, most people link ecstasy to the sexual act. You know, oh gosh, you know, uh, you know, when I when I had that experience with my wife or my boyfriend or my girlfriend, I was in ecstasy for such and such a time, and my body did such and such a thing. I'm trying to keep this G-rated, and I was in ecstasy for that. However many contractions that was, great. This is not that. This is not that. This is far, far better than that. Uh, this is this is bliss times a thousand. Um, so you know the amazing qualities of bliss, where you're heaving and you're crying and your and your you know your 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 body and your five bodies are doing their best to to hold on to some of this energy and channel the rest of it uh, with ecstasy. It's beyond. The control of the of the five bodies. There is no more control. Uh, with ecstasy, you reach into areas of bliss 
that are so strong and so absolute and so complete that you are totally controlled. Uh, you, you know, unless you've had it for for many many times, you 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 know you're you're further along in your awakened uh, process. Uh, you don't even you can't even walk. Uh, you'll have memory loss during the time uh, that the bliss occurred. Uh, this sometimes happens to me when I'm giving a seminar. You know, and I I ask the Kundalini not to do this, but <laughs> doesn't always listen to me. You know, it, once again I get the I get the I get the admonition. It's not about you, Mr. Christen. It's about the people who are here at the seminar. So, you know, surrender to that. And so, of course, I do. I surrender to it. And invariably, during the seminar, I will give a a, a, a piece of information to people that the Kundalini really resonates with. That, that specific group of people need to hear this. And so, boom, in that, in that, in that resonance with the information that's been given, I will begin to feel the heart chakra uh, vibrate strongly, and I will feel levels of bliss and then levels of ecstasy begin to 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 be uh, what's the word uh, to be given into the body, and and I warn people about this. I've learned to warn people about this at the seminar, but I will literally go into an ecstatic state. And I just have to, you know, I, I freeze. I freeze up and, you know, the tears are flowing and everything is, you know, and and it, it, it doesn't last very long because the Kundalini in me knows I'm standing in front of a group of people giving a seminar. But it also knows that as this level of grace is given through my radiance, these people who are listening and watching and seeing this occur are also receiving the transformative levels of grace that this can bring. So in other words, if you're standing next to a person that is having ecstatic bliss, uh, levels of transformation are being given to you just for being there, just for being in the presence of a person that is going through this. You understand that? So that... So even you know even the the radiance that is occurring all the time with Kundalini, uh, there are extreme levels of radiance that can be given through its expression as a level of ecstasy, ecstatic bliss, uh, and this is so so very strong. You don't even want to think that you can resist it. I have a I have you know a lot of different communities. And, you know, some of the people in the community say, wow, you know, I've spent years and years controlling my ego and controlling my emotions, and gosh darn it, I'm I'm as strong as it gets now with my emotions. I can stand anything. Go ahead. Test me. <laughs> Go ahead, you know, test my emotional control. And what they have no reference for, and what very few people have reference for, is the level of transformation that brings that, that the Kundalini brings you don't get to have the kind of control that your ego thinks it has you know the ego during an ecstatic blissful experience is is, is, is a molecule of dust on the, on, the, on, the, on the tip of a flagellating uh, micro hair on, on the human the ego has it Absolutely nothing to say about this. It is totally dominated. And and so is every other body of expression of the human being uh, as the ec- ecstatic bliss courses through the body. And once again, you can't resist it. It will happen. It will happen. And um, as you surrender to it, it feels really, really amazing and and, you know, people want to know, well, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? Well, you don't go into physical expressions of of uh, sensorial intake. You go beyond the physical expression of sensory input, far beyond it. And you become at one with a level of grace that is, that is that is higher and that is stronger and that is 
or I'm going to have difficulty finding words to describe. Um, you you enter into the body of God goddess. You enter into a divine expression, and it is so overwhelming for the these five expressed. Uh, bodies that comprise our human consciousness, even our higher uh, mental functioning human consciousness, that everything gets kind of blown away. Uh, So, for instance, you know, I mentioned the memory loss earlier on. Your memory goes away. You don't get to form a memory engram, you know, right at the beginning of these these episodes. Later on, of course, you can. But um, as you go into these extremely exalted and and cherished and energetically compounded, loving, beautiful, fantastic, amazing states of grace. Uh, it, it overshadows and it and it takes control away from the body's normal uh, level of sensory input, and so the memory isn't as stimulated like it normally would be, and you just have to surrender the memory. You, sur- you surrender trying to remember exactly what occurred every step of the way as you entered into the heavenly field for that micro moment. And that micro moment is is timeless in a way. It, sometimes I've had bliss and I felt like I've been there a very long time when in fact just a few seconds have passed. And I, you know, I come out of it and I'm standing up in front of the people and they're just kind of staring at me with a with kind of a wry smile on their face going, wow, what just happened to him? You know, and <laughs> I have to say, where was I? <laughs> and ask anyone that's been to any of my seminars, and you know, they'll tell you that this occurred. Uh, so this will occur for you. This will occur for you, and you won't get to control it on the one hand. On the other hand, if you surrender completely into your kundalini grace and you begin to really, really, really flow with the idea and the understanding and the fact of the kundalini controlling every aspect of your life now, you are not you anymore. You are an exaltation. You you are an idea of divinity. You are a symbol of grace. Okay, you have you have evolved beyond a corporeal, uh, uh, multi-functioning, uh, organic biological being of, of, of communicated um, agreements between different cellular systems. Okay, you you jumped beyond that. And in doing so, you have, ag- you know, that aggregate consciousness of the 17 trillion cells that make up the typical human body. Uh, that has also been evolved into a different expression of life. So as you have this grace, you begin to have information downloaded into your mind, into your expressive body, your, your mental body, your emotional body about what it is the kundalini agenda wants for you. And so you may feel these amazing levels of forgiveness to overcome you. Uh, for no reason, you're just like, oh, gosh, you know, I'm feeling so for- I feel so forgiving today. You know, go ahead, cut me off on the freeway, I'm fine. Go ahead, you know, uh, you know do this or that. Uh, I'm going to forgive you no matter what. I am walking in forgiveness. Because I have been given to do this through the ecstatic state of kundalini bliss. This is this is what's happening to me now. This is how I am now. And this can last for weeks. It can last for five minutes. It's all depending on what the kundalini agenda is for you. You know, no, you know the length, length of time is not important because, once again, five seconds can feel like five five weeks. Okay. Uh, time uh, and the linear sense and understanding of, of the passage of time does not equate 
within the ecstatic blissful states. A lot of a, a lot of people uh, of, a, of a Hindu belief system will call some of these states samadhi or, or or nirvana or you know these types of states. But even those descriptions, they they don't qualify as an accurate description because of the customized and individual level of interaction that divinity has with a single person. You know, people are in different different developmental states and you know, and you hear a lot about perfection and this and that and it's like, no, no, no. You go beyond levels of of what is judged to be perfect. You're beyond that. You're beyond those levels of of mental expression or spiritual expression that that say, oh, well, you, you you're this way now. Nobody can be the way that a, another person. Nobody can understand what a person is going through when they have the the ecstatic blissful states occur. Uh, it, it, it's in 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 very real ways. It goes beyond words. Far beyond words. Words. Words are nothing. Words don't even exist to describe this. I'm struggling right now, as you may have noticed, to to try to put words to 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 what is occurring in a way that is that is in the that, that my Kundalini wants it to be expressed to you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, depending on on your process of, with the Kundalini, your individual custom process with the Kundalini will determine what areas of activity or what areas begin to stimulate uh, ecstatic bliss within you. For me, you know, often it's when I'm teaching people. This is kind of what it wants me to do. And, and so when I'm out there doing that and I, and I give, uh, you know, that, that kind of information that it really resonates with, well, then you can feel the build. And for me, from my experience with it, you feel it in your heart chakra. I feel it in my heart chakra first. But I know it's coming before I feel it. I know it's like, oh, jeez. There I've done it, you know. Uh, the, the tear ducts begin to fill, and uh, the breathing begins to be altered. Sometimes you have time, <laughs> sometimes you have time to warn people, that, oh, coming into bliss here, but not most of the time. Most of the time, you just have to kind of turn away and let it run its course. Let it run its course. I'm used to having it happen now so much that that I'm good with it. I'm good with it, and it's good with me. And and uh, you know, I warn the people that you know if I'm do, if I'm having it in front of people, I warn people that this is what's going to occur. So you know, no worries. Um, and it comes, and and I embrace it, and I encourage you to embrace it too. You are not bipolar. You are not schizophrenic. You are not having any kind of a negative thing. Uh, it's it's a very positive gift of grace, for the most part. And unless, of course, you know you're injecting fear into your kundalini awakening experience. And then, of course, it can be massively frightening for people, massively so, uh, and which can can really twist a person's uh, five-body mental response to the grace that the kundalini gives. Um, and that may also be part of their karmic uh, uh, destiny. So, but... For those of you who, who are new to this or who have had this for a while, you know, you know that uh, that you have a divine destiny uh, within the awakened Kundalini. You go online and you read all these horror stories about Kundalini. Oh my God! I started moving spontaneously and I couldn't control it. Well, okay, that makes you think you're sick. Oh my God! I start seeing and hearing people that were dead and. And nobody else was seeing or hearing, oh, that makes you think you're going crazy. Okay. So for those of you who who understand that, oh, okay, Kundalini Awakening really is this amazing gift, but it's so strong that our society does not have the reference points for it to understand what is occurring, uh, then, yeah, yeah, you will get it. You will under, you'll begin to understand the Kundalini uh, blissful ecstasy that can come, the the nirvana experience, the samadhi experience. Okay, you will begin to understand how this affects you. 
And one of the things, one of the major things that I'm really going to encourage you to do in order to have this is to to have extreme levels of surrender to your kundalini. Give your life to your kundalini. Give control of your life to the kundalini. Give every expression and every sense of and every idea and everything you have that you can give to the kundalini in you. If you have a teacher, a teacher that is that is kundalini awakened and who is, you know, giving you uh, instructions to do this or that, well, you do that instruction because you only have that teacher because of your kundalini. You see, if if you've been having kundalini awakening activation, I should say activation symptoms, and those activations uh, uh, put you in the presence of a kundalini awakened teacher, well, that teacher is now part of your process. That teacher is part of your process and until the Kundalini says otherwise. That person is part of your process and you are to partake of the teachings that person gives completely without uh, divergence, without ego-based judgments, without fear, without uh, uh, a lack of trust, in complete obedience to the instruction of the divine within or you wouldn't be in the presence of that teacher. And as some of my private students will tell you, this brings on levels, for, I mean, you know, students that have been drawn to to uh, to work with me. Uh, this brings on very, very strong levels of bliss. Uh, and for some of them, they will have ecstatic bliss. It will close your eyes. It will, it, it will look like to any outside observer, uh, observer like you're crying. Um, but you're not. You're not. You're just experiencing, really. You're just, you're, you're in surrender. And, and, you know, any kind of a kundalini teacher who is authentic and who knows about these things will just patiently wait for this to pass. And it can happen with every other expression. So, for instance, I'll be having a conversation with a, with a student and, uh, and they'll be saying, okay, and I did this, and boom. Bliss, bliss takes over them. And, and I just wait. And I, you know, sometimes I'll say, just let it happen, let it occur, don't resist it. I know that you have something else to say, but let the Kundalini have its way. And then the bliss will pass, and then they'll say a few other words, and boom, the bliss comes again. You know, once again, they just... They allow it to occur. They allow the tears to flow. Nothing is wrong. Sometimes the body spasms. Sometimes uh, they're jerked this way and that, and it's okay. It's nothing, you know, life-threatening. It doesn't even look that bad. It just looks a little spastic. And uh, and they come through it, and they'll say a few more words or or express a, another uh, aspect of their experience, or they'll, they'll be taking an instruction from me, and boom, it hits again. Okay? So this is this can be a very, very recurring theme as you develop your levels of surrender. And surrenders are basically, you're, you may be wondering, well, what the heck is surrender, Chris? I mean, you're, you're saying this whole thing about surrender. What surrender really is is giving up the authority that you have over your life's choices to the kundalini. Giving up the ego authority, giving up the mental authority, the emotional authority, uh, you know, the, the, the physical authority, the spiritual authority over your life and the choices and decisions you make in your life to that quality of divinity within you that we're calling kundalini. This is what it means. And this is very hard for some people's ego to, to it's like, because, you know, you've worked so hard and through the ego to to survive what it is to be in this difficult world this predatory world, and and uh, and you you've learned successful life management techniques based upon ego ego control. And here this this guy with his salt and pepper beard is saying, "Hey, got to give all that up now." <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't fit well for everybody. I understand that, but I'm still going to encourage you to do it. Really do it. Don't give in to ego-based excuses. 
When you surrender, you begin to foster a, a conscious nurturing of the divine nurturing that is happening within you. So the transformation that divinity is making within you is being nurtured not only by itself upon your body, but now by your conscious support of that nurturance and transformation upon your body. This is huge. This is a huge agreement that you make with your kundalini to help it change you, to help it transform you. And as you get with a teacher, you get with a certain level of, of books, you know, uh, Gopi Krishna or, or, or uh, you know, any, any, any number of, well, there aren't that many books out there about what I'm talking about. Gopi, I guess Gopi comes as close to it, and even then he doesn't give instructions so much. I find it hard to find people that, that, that give what I'm giving in this way. But anyway... As you, as your kundalini leads you to specific people to learn specific lessons from, surrender yourself to the kundalini, choosing that person for you. And from that aspect, surrender yourself to the information that person is giving you. If you don't feel comfortable surrendering yourself to that specific teacher, then don't. Just surrender yourself to the information that teacher is giving. And that can be the same thing in a way. But, you know, as you trust your kundalini, as you surrender control of your life to your kundalini, uh, it will get easier and easier and easier. And when I say surrender control of your life, your kundalini understands that you have kids. It understands that, you know, you've got four kids and they're all in different grades of school and they all have to get dressed and they have to have that lunch made and they have to have breakfast and they have to be loaded up in the car or taken over to the bus stop or in some way gotten to their school on time. Your kundalini understands this. Your kundalini understands that you have a job to do. You have a job to go to. You have to get up at a certain time. You have to hop in that shower, get your clothes on, your uniform on, whatever it is you wear on. It understands you have to have, hop in that car or hop on that bus or hop on that uh, uh um, <laughs> mass transit system, whatever that may be, it understands this. It's not going to get in the way of that. Uh, it, it will it will begin to control how you feel about that. It will begin to control uh, other aspects of your life. It will control your dreams. And you'll have bliss in dreams that will be directly translated to bliss in the physical. So you'll wake up from a dream having bliss, and you'll be having bliss in the physical body. And this includes ecstatic bliss. When you're having an out-of-body experience, you can have ecstatic bliss. Okay, you can have ecstatic bliss. Uh, if you're undergoing a very difficult medical operation, you know, they're, they're cutting your chest open and pulling your heart out and cutting striations in your heart. And, you know, you're, you, they don't know if you're going to survive or not your soul, your consciousness can be out of that body, having a blissful experience. When the kundalini comes to you and, and begins a dismemberment process, which I haven't talked about yet, uh, during that dismemberment process, you can have a blissful experience. Uh, bliss is used in, in a many, many multifaceted way of giving to the human being a level of love and caring and nurturance that goes far beyond uh, what may be occurring to them on a physical, emotional, mental, psychological level. I won't say spiritual because spiritual encompasses, uh, the spiritual body encompasses that type of, a, of an experience. So, so bliss and ecstasy uh, are common denominators within a kundalini awakening or activated experience. It draws you forward. I'm, I'm being told to put the number out here again. Uh, the, to call in as a guest, uh, the number is 347-934-0026. You could call and ask a question about any aspect 
of your Kundalini Awakening experience. The number is 347-934-0026. Uh, Santara, do you have any experience of uh, bliss or ecstasy you'd like to talk about? Hi, Chris. Um, I've been listening um, to great attention, and I I don't have anything to really share. Um, I don't know. No, but what you have said... Um, has been my experience in many cases, yeah. But no, I don't. Okay, no worries. So, as the as as the person begins to experience great levels of ecstasy and bliss, so does their process begin to move forward in a in a greater and more expressive way. Um, the dream life, as I mentioned before, begins to be taken over. Uh, and not taken over in a bad way. Although at first, oh my gosh, it can seem so scary. You know, these these talking serpents or these talking wolves or these talking animals in some way, shape, or form, or or a uh, an angel may come down and begin to talk with a person, or a or a or a man in a meditation pose floating down on a cloud and just beginning to strike up a conversation or just a regular looking person coming up to you and, and, and beginning to point out some spiritual values and teaching that uh, that it wants you to hear. Uh, this is all manifestations of the Kundalini. The Kundalini can come to you if it's a sacred feminine, the Shakti. Uh, the Kundalini will often appear as a woman in red or a woman in white or an old woman with a corresponding color fixation, or a, or a young, very young girl dancing uh, in, in flowing uh, uh, purple uh, gowns, uh, you know, or, or you know, the sacred masculine, you know, coming as a, as a, as a, as a strong and, and exceptionally handsome person, or the sacred masculine coming in as a, as a lion, or. A, or some some kind of a a representation of the sacred male that that you know wants to give its communication to you in the dream state. So you know, keep an eye open for that uh, in your awakening process. Uh, surrender yourself to your kundalini. Uh, you, you you read a lot. You, you hear a lot. Uh, you know, with people on the internet, people in YouTube, people in books. You know, they're saying, wow, well, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. Well, you know, the teacher's not always going to be a personification of a human teacher. Sometimes that teacher will come from the base of your spine. And then that teacher from the base of your spine will direct you to a physical teacher like myself. Uh, sometimes the teacher, you know, that is coming will indeed be a, a physical person teaching a specific knowledge base. Uh, but it may be only a part, a part portion of, of the information that the Kundalini wants you to have at that time. So, for instance, it's the way of taking a class. So, this is a class. This this hour and a half that we're that we're talking about right now is a class on on uh, ecstatic bliss. This is the ecstatic bliss class. This is the the primer, should we say, to the ecstatic bliss class that the uh, that the Kundalini uh, wants you to understand, and I want to say hello to to uh, guest number three two zero five. Hello, thank you for joining us. Uh, guest number two seven eight one. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Bashji. Bashji, it's always a pleasure to see you here. And so, you know, some of the guests that I see there on the chat room, I'd like to say hello to you all. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for many of those who will join us in the in the uh, in the future with the archives, uh, uh, Kundalini is a timeless experience. And so the very fact that you're there with us in the future uh, is appreciated right now in this in this time present. Um, the, your, your flow and your grace are felt and appreciated too. Uh, with the Kundalini ecstatic blissful states, I have not been able to walk. I get frozen in place. And so my motion is definitely limited except for the heavings and the sighs and the tears and the some shaking uh, that occurs 
I I don't get to walk. I know that Ramakrishna would walk. He could like walk around his students. I mean, he was kind of acting pretty strange. <laughs> And he looked pretty strange. And you got they have some extant pictures of Ramakrishna walking. That's R A M A and then K R I S H N A Ramakrishna. And Google him and, and, and look at him in an, in a state of ecstasy. Um, ecstasy is, is for me it's so strong for me that it I can't walk. I just have to stand. Sometimes I can't even stand. Sometimes I must sit. Uh, it'll depend on the kundalini and what its agenda is for me within the gifting of that exalted state. If I'm up in front of a group of people, then it will have me stand. If I'm laying in bed or sitting in in, in a chair, well, then of course I'm not going to. It's not going to jerk me up in a standing position. It'll just come to me within that level. Um, often, it, it, you you may get bliss uh, when you're driving, and just let it come. Let it come. Keep your eyes open. If you can pull off, so much the better. Typically, you won't get ecstatic bliss when you're driving. Okay, I, I always want to come into these areas because, you know, I, I don't want people to think that, oh, my God, I'm going to have ecstatic bliss while I'm driving, and there I go. It's not going to occur. You have to remember the intelligence of the Kundalini itself. It knows you. It knows you're behind the wheel. Uh, what you may not want to do is try to consciously stimulate kundalini when you're behind the wheel. Then you're injecting your ego expectation and control and decision and choice upon your kundalini awakening platform, and that can have disastrous results. I did this once when I was driving. I was, And I've mentioned this before, so I'll only go over it briefly. Uh, when I was driving a, a big car on Highway 12 in Northern California through the wine country. And uh, I had just, you know, it was early, early, early in my in my process, and I had just uh, uh, heard something about the extreme cold uh, that can come. And I just so I said, okay, fine, you know, here I am driving down this bucolic highway. It's a very beautiful uh, highway in a nice car. And uh, and I felt safe because, you know, I've driven so many miles that I feel very safe behind the wheel. And I said, okay, bring it on. Let me see. Let's see. What, what do we have to do here? Boom. The, the cold, the extreme cold started to build in the, in the, between the first and second chakra. And, and it started to expand up my front channels. And it, the, the tactility of it was so shocking and so amazing that I immediately pulled off the road and asked it to go down. I, I <laughs> I said thanks, thanks, but it's maybe not when I'm driving. And uh, and I really encourage you to to adopt that understanding. Don't do anything of a meditative or Kundalini actuating quality while you're behind the wheel. And I know that you may have sudden states of absorption happen to you. This is a form of Siddic ecstasy. Siddic meaning an ascended skill. Uh, uh, ecstasy meaning a a higher uh, vibrational component of that extended, uh, you know that that exalted skill, and so you're in the you're mixing bliss and ecstasy with a a, a divine skill, and this this happens a lot with healing. With healing, uh, you can begin to go into ecstasy at the time that you're giving somebody a healing. And it can be a very, very beautiful experience. Uh, it can also be a very, very powerful healing for the person. But once again, this is a choice that the Kundalini makes. You don't mes- necessarily get to go, oh, okay, uh, let's see who's on my docket here. Oh, yes, I see. Oh, Amelia Centara. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to give Amelia Centara an ecstatic, blissful healing today. Okay, Amelia, put on your seatbelt. Uh no, you don't get to do that. You you surrender to the Kundalini, and within that surrendering, the Kundalini brings you what it knows you can have. Once again, you don't know as much about yourself as the Kundalini knows about yourself. It knows your karma. It knows your weaknesses. It knows your fears. It knows your strengths. 
Okay, it knows how to teach its its child, its kundalini child, which is what you are. So as you go into uh, telepathy and say you narrow in, you know, the kundalini has you narrow in on a on a specific frequency where you're hearing only one person's thoughts out of out of uh, out of a, say a whole mall of thoughts, right? You're you're you know it's it's being focused into a narrow band communication where you can see and hear uh you can see the thought pictures and you can hear the 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 thoughtful inner conversation or inner dialogue that that person has about themselves and and we'll say that oh they're just uh, you know they're so they're they're kind of going off on themselves about how bad they are how ugly they are or how inappropriate they are or how you know you know they're they're really and the Kundalini said, no, 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 this person needs a little bit of a boost here. Let's go ahead and give it to them. Their karma can have this. They're here in your presence. Therefore, here you go. And as you give that love and you give that healing or the Kundalini gives it to them through you, you begin to feel that expanded state of bliss. Not necessarily ecstatic bliss, but it's typical. the, 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 the bliss state is typically a really good state to be in uh, when a healing is given. The bliss state is not the ecstatic bliss. The ecstatic bliss is like a thousand times the bliss state. So you have you have the the three stages of bliss. You have the the uh, the well, actually four stages. No bliss. No bliss is is a stage, right? But it's that drawing. So we'll just say the the pre bliss state. Then you have the peri bliss state, where where you you know you're just getting little touches of it, and the the tingles are going up the the, the spine and up the, uh, the the different trunks of the body, and then you have the bliss state where you're having uh, full on tear evoking, body heaving, body shaking, bliss, and then you have the ecstatic bliss state where where you're beyond measurement, you're you're into the divine, and the divine is into you in such a powerful way that it defies verbal uh, description, absolutely defies verbal ex- description. So these four states of bliss is what I've been talking about today, and which anybody who is having a kundalini awakening experience can uh, partake of or has already partaken of. Uh, you know, for those of you that are that are considering or being pulled towards the kundalini this is an information uh, reference point for you uh as once again as you experience a civic skill or a, or a, a, a an exalted skill that comes with the kundalini and you're applying that exalted skill in a love based way often uh, levels of bliss will be actuated within the person wow. some of the healers that I'm training um you know I will give Actually, I should say the Kundalini and me will give to them an instruction to go into deep, deep, deep levels of devotion before they give healing. Okay, they go into very, very deep levels of of loving devotion to the Kundalini, to their Kundalini teacher. Uh, they give very, very strong levels of of of, uh, of devotion into that. Then they go into the healing. Boom. That's when the bliss states can begin to accentuate the healing or actually the bliss itself and the devotion and the love amplified by the Kundalini will begin to to form a healing mechanism upon the person who is receiving it and uh you know some of the some of the people that receive these these healings are are literally brought to tears of appreciation tears of reception. Uh, it's a very beautiful, beautiful thing to be a part of. And I do recommend any and all of you that are having Kundalini to explore uh, the idea and the application of Kundalini healing. And, and in this way, I'm going to suggest that you might want to talk with Santara about Kundalini-infused therapeutic touch, K-I-T-T, Kundalini-infused therapeutic touch. I think I've mentioned it a, a couple of times on this uh, uh, in, in, in these in these uh, broadcasts that we've been giving. Um, uh, once again, I have a few announcements I want to make. Um, 
uh, the, the Boston seminar that was scheduled for October has been canceled. So nobody should should be signing up for that. Uh, as a, as a, as a Centaur indicated earlier in this program, uh, we I would accept uh, and appreciate donations of any 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 denomination that that you feel this information is worth to you. Um, the uh, the donation can be given at Ascension Kundalini dot blogs. Dot com. So if you just go A S C E N S I O N Kundalini K U N D A L I N I uh, dot blogspot dot com, uh, you'll see the the donate button there. And there's information about the Kundalini on that blog on that blog as well. I sent you Kundalini, uh, and I suggest that you that you partake of that. Uh, we are. We are currently in the sign-up stage of a Kundalini Awakening Shakti Pot that I'm giving uh, for the summer solstice. And I encourage you to sign up for that at the Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at yahoogroups.com or the Chrism, uh, Kunda, Chrism Shakti Pot, Chrism Kundalini Shakti Pot, I believe is what it's it's uh, given as on the Facebook Groups, but you can also access that through Kundalini exclamation point or Kundalini Awakening Systems One on Facebook groups. And um, feel free to contact me, K Fire for All. That's F O R All. K Fire for All at yahoo.com. If you have any questions, uh, also go to the YouTube channel where I have about 240 some odd videos about your Kundalini Awakening process, much shorter versions of these types of conversations that we've been having today. Uh, so that is YouTube, and that's you can just go Chris and Kundalini at YouTube, and you'll see you know, some guy with a beard, sometimes in a Hawaiian shirt, uh, giving a, a video about the Kundalini. The, the YouTube channel is Chris and O Kundalini, but it, the O is the zero, so Chris and Zero Kundalini, and uh, and it's like Zero Point Kundalini. And you can reach the channel there. And um, do you have anything that you'd like to say, uh, Amelia? I do, actually. Just um, a little correction on the website. There's a hyphen between the word Ascension and Kundalini. So it's wwwascension hyphen Kundalini dot blogspot dot com. Well, thank you, thank you. Okay, so there you go. You have the hyphen in it. Um, so feel free if you if, if there's a donation that you feel that you can make to to what it is that is being done here, uh, I, I'd be great greatly appreciative of it. Um, and if there is no donation, I'm still greatly appreciative of you even listening to this. Um, so without further ado, uh, I would like to once again thank uh, Mia Santara and her family in the Kingdom of Kerry in Ireland. I'd like to thank Eileen Laurel. I'd like to thank Ed and and uh, um, uh, and all the uh, the private students, you know, that I have Magdalene and and the, the Northern Woman and and. Uh, a lot of the folks who don't want to be named, I just want to thank you for choosing to work with me and and choosing to to uh, surrender to your kundalini. Uh, thank you for listening, and hopefully we'll have another conversation next week. Bye-bye.